Okay, good morning. Um, so today we are going to complete, uh, hopefully, the voice user interface part with dialog flow and uh, JavaScript and whatever, uh, so that uh, next week uh, we can start, uh, we can move on from this and you can adopt this in your project if you want and we can start speaking about the evaluation that is the last step of the process that you started uh, in October and that is one of the steps needed for your project as well because in the last but, but one week we are going to ask, ask you for the last milestone that will be uh, without feedback because it's, it's the end of the course and it will be about a user evaluation, a usability evaluation of your prototype. Mm -hmm. So we are going to, ne next week we are going through uh, what's an evaluation in general and you partially experiment the, these with the heuristic evaluation and how to conduct a usability test, a usability study that is what you are going to, to do at the end of the course and then we can also speak about a user study but it's something that we are not going to ask you for milestone the user study because it's much more uh, complex, so let's say, much more structured than a usability evaluation. But it's an important step as well. So, and this, this will conclude, let's say, the uh, process in itself. Um, but back to this uh, voice user interface. Yesterday we stopped here and Particularly, we stop that we we try to integrate the dialog flow uh, in our PHP uh, application, and we stopped here in this uh, in this preci precise step. Mm, that we try we we write anything, and the answer is that oh no, there is an internal server error because there was a, an error in our code. Um, so we stopped here because it was seven. So the, the error is <coughs> extremely not complex. Um, so basically the code is right. Just to remind you what we did, we got the post request from the Ajax uh, request starting from the HTML uh, JavaScript pages uh, that we have. And we create a session that is a container for a conversation with the user with a specific session ID that should not change uh, in the same conversation. We create a session, we take the text, the textual input coming from the web page, we put it inside this query input object and we send it with this detect intent method to Dialogflow with a post request and we get the response and get the fulfillment text. That is the actual response coming from uh, Dialogflow. Hmm? This doesn't work because I forgot a slash here, basically. And so with this slash, hello, how hmm? can I help you? We can get the answer directly from Dialogflow. This is one of the option in the welcome intent. The default welcome intent, if I type again, hello. Hi, how are you doing? There is another answer because Dialogflow randomly choose among all the possible answer in the welcome intent. And if we are going to ask about the weather in, let's say, Turin. It will be sunny in Turin. It will say it will be sunny in the city that we, are, we specified. And if we ask for the weather, without a city, we are going to, we are expected to see a where, in which we say in Turin, and we got probably the same, it will be sunny. Where? Let's say in Turin, let's change in Rome. It will be sunny in Rome. And anyway, so the same procedure that we are, we experimented on the Dialogflow website is now, let's say, embedded in our code. So this trailing slash that I forgot just to 
to, to make sure this basically this dir is the current directory served by the php um, from apache so that this dir is uh, this dir is resolved is solved in http localhost uh, slash weather app and then we should have, add uh, slash vendor that is a folder in the project slash out outload.php that without that slash it was a unique uh, weather app vendor all without spaces without anything and that deal was not present and everything stopped working because it's just uh, a, a, a mandatory step to import to outload all the libraries from composer the sdk of dialog from composer mm -hmm. So this uh, completed integration between Dialogflow and the natural language processing part and this uh, application. So let me retake these slides here for a while. So we set up Dialogflow last week and we integrated it in code today, yesterday, sorry. So right now we need since this is uh, an application that uh, asks about the weather, we need to, well, get actual weather forecast from somewhere hmm, that is able to provide a weather forecast. Not just say it will be sunny or it, it will rain independently from the place, the day, the hour, whatever. Uh, so Dialogflow right now, we set up Dialogflow to have static responses. It will always answer, it will be sunny in, name the city, or here it will rain. We can obviously connect Dialogflow through third party, with third party services like a weather forecast. And this connection between uh, Dialogflow and other third party um, services should be done by us. So the process is that Dialogflow perform through a webhook a request to a server, your own server, that is responsible to get the request coming from Dialogflow, process it, ask for additional information like the weather in a city from an external service or from a database that you have on your computer so something that is not on Dialogflow, but it's needed to process the final answer and provide the correct answer. So if we are going to ask what's the weather in Turin, we will get the actual weather from an actual weather forecasting service, not just a random sentence. And uh, how it works in Dialogflow, it works that uh, we set up these uh, fulfillment step for each intent that we want to have this external information. So for the welcome intent we don't set up a fulfillment for an external service because it's just an hi, how are you, or greetings, it's just static response. We are going to set up this for our custom create intent about the weather because we want not to have those to static response, it will be sunny or, or it will rain, but just to have actual response from a weather forecasting service. When this fulfillment is enabled, Dialogflow ignore the static response that you insert in the, in the intent. You can even delete those and try to contact an external server. through uh, this webhook. A webhook is an HTTP callback. So this is what we are going to create today. An HTTP callback that is able to respond to a post request, only to a single post request. So Dialog for a certain point will call, will uh, make, will made a post request to a given service to give and go callback and it'll expect a response in a certain format and this is obviously uh, immediate 
So you just get the, the weather forecast when the user is asking for the weather forecast, not just uh, in polling for some time and then with information ready for the user, but just in that specific moment that the user is asking for the, we we the, we the weather. Hmm? And again, this uh, summarize that, so you have your end user application that speak with Dialogflow either with some integration or with some API service like we did yesterday. And then we have this webhook here that can either ask a local database, either ask an external API and get the information back all this process through to the end user. And webhook, as I would, as told you yesterday, are officially supported via REST API. That this is something that uh, we are going to use because it's just our answer to uh, an HTTP request is inserted in the Node.js SDK so the full JSON of response, the parsing of the original JSON is embedded in a JavaScript class and on Firebase so you can also do this and I will briefly show you how all this part without creating an external service, an external uh, HTTP callback on your computer, on your server, but you can create everything on Dialogflow online because Dialogflow can speak with Firebase and share, for instance, the content that is available in Firebase. So, uh, and the other things that is important here is that the webhook perform a post request on HTTPS. So that address that Dialogflow is going to call is a public address in HTTPS. So it is not localhost. Cannot be. It should be reachable from the internet on HTTPS. And we are going to solve this as well in a very simple way. But one step at a time. So what we are going to do so yesterday we stopped basically here. We have our front-end application here that performed this Azure request to the process that performed this post to Dialogflow with the content, uh, what's the weather in Turin. Dialogflow know that it has to answer with, it will be sunny in Turin. So it pre prepared the answer that go back to the process PHP that finally answer to the Ajax request for the front-end application. What we are going to do today is to add this part. So up to here, the flux is the same. There is the front-end application that performs the Ajax request. The process PHP through the SDK call Dialogflow and ask what's the weather. Dialogflow at a certain point say, I don't know how to answer to this intent. So it will call the webhook that will be another webhook.php file. Uh, with a post request, the HTTP callback. This will get through a GET request, for instance, the weather forecasting from the external service, or it can also get needed information from a local database, doesn't matter. And it will reply to this request, Dialogflow then will reply to the other request, and finally to the IAC request. So this is a long chain, but in the end, all the information go through the front-end application. And this webhook.php will be served by the same server that is hosting everything else, but they, these two uh, PHP scripts are totally independent. They don't even need to know that the other exists, what's the content of the other, they're just two PHP files. So you, in theory, you can have the front-end, this as a PHP file, and this is as a Python file or as a Java file or whatever it's able to answer a Node.js file. Uh, everything that's able to process, a, to get a, a post request, process the content of the post request and generate a response. Mm -hmm. And then interact with whatever third party service expose an API. The weather forecasting, the Google calendar, the train service or a local database. Mm -hmm. And again, this communication here this communication here uh, must happen on HTTP and with a public address. 
this is just mandatory. Hmm? So, how we are going to do this? Um, we need to close this, first of all, and we can start creating a, a webhook.php file. That is right now empty and it's fine. And then we can set up dialog flow. So as always we go in our console, we sign in. With the right account and we go in our agent that is just this one that is lighted and we open our intent that we want to connect with uh, our book so here the only change that we need to do is to go down when it's written fulfillment click on it and you have to um, slider here one to enable web call for this entire intent and the other that is active only when you enable the first one that is to enable our book call for slot filling so we just need the first one because we want to get the entire response from the entire intent from the external service this second one that we are not going to enable is to use the same procedure not for having the entire response but just for slot filling slot filling is the way in which dialogflow call filling this parameter so we we know if if that we are going to ask what's the weather dialogflow answer where and we say in theory and so we, with the answer in Turing, we fill the slot associated with GeoCity. This could also be done by calling an external service instead of asking a user. Be because maybe you have this for booking meetings, and so you have to fill a date according to availability on a calendar. So you don't want to ask the user what your availability is but you can just fill that date by looking at the calendar and get one day that is empty on the calendar, for instance. So without a user intervention. So this second thing here is just to enable slot filling. So filling to an external service with the same procedure for just one of those parameters. So the first one for everything, the second one just for slot filling. And then you can also have for everything in the same call, no problem. But right now, let's focus on the first one that is for the entire intent. And here we have to press save. And this intent from this moment on will use the fulfillment, we call a webhook to uh, connect, to get information. We can even remove this if we want because we don't really need this, those responses it will always need to ask a real weather forecasting. And this is the first step. The second step is going in uh, fulfillment, in which you see two things. The first one is again the web, the web book. That is what I just explained to you. The web service, a web service, your web service, that will receive a post request from Dialogflow in the format, in a specific format in JSON, and you need to provide a response in a suitable way according to the webhook requirements. Let's see if it's something, uh, yeah, that's that the picture. And, uh, okay. And so we, we need to enable this because we are going to use this. When we enable this, some other fields appear, like, for instance, 
some mandatory field and some optional field. So the, the only mandatory fields is that URL, that again, HTTP public URL, that this dialog flow, when the intent is matching uh, the request for a fulfillment, it will call, will send a post request to that URL. And then you can also have some basic authentication. You can have some header if your web service, your callback will need that, you can also insert that. And you can also say, okay, I would like to disable webhook for small talk or, or not. By default, it's disabled. And then you can also, so this is webhook. You need a web service running somewhere, or you can, let me enable this just for a moment. Then if it doesn't enable, no matter. Okay. So you can even perform the same thing just here in JavaScript. It uh, Dialogflow proposes something to to answer that. So it creates a webhook for you and. It show you that you can cons the log the header of the request and the body of the request so you can see the JSON that is receiving and you can prepare a response from the from the dialog flow. And so this is something clever. You don't need an HTTP server with a public address. You can just work here. We are not going to work here today, um, mainly for one reason. That is that this is perfectly fine if you don't need to call external service. So if you have data on Firebase, stored on Firebase, this is good. You can from here just access to Firebase without any problem uh, of sort. But if you want to use this to call the weather service, the weather forecast service, you have to add your credit card to the Google Cloud service. Because for a certain, mm, there is a threshold uh, over those that threshold is by you have to pay for using for calling an external service from here so the threshold is quite high so if you want you can use it deals you have to insert your credit card in your google developer account and so you can call external service uh, since i don't want to force any of you to um, add a credit card to google nor i want to add a credit card here we are just not going to use this and we realize a webhook in the old way without all this online part. But this is possible. Hmm? Again, for uh, services, for filling intents that are not using an external service, this is great. If you store data on Firebase, this is great because in, it's a Google service strictly connected to this. You see that here, that is export.dialog for Firebase fulfillment. So it's already running uh, connected to Firebase. Uh, if you want to use this to connect an external service, you can. It's just uh, JavaScript here. It's not JS indeed. Um, so just call the API, but for calling the external API, you have to add your credit card to the Google Cloud platform before in your account with a high threshold before paying, obviously, but there is. Um, otherwise, you can just uh, skip this and use the traditional webhook. So obviously, that one is much more easier because you don't have to set up anything. You don't have to set up a server. You don't have to set up an HTTPS public address and so on. But it has this other limitation. So long way. The long way is to use the webhook and create a webhook in code on HTTPS. So the webhook, what it needs to do. So when a webhook is called, Dialogflow send a post request like this. This is the request that Dialogflow is sending to your uh, web uh, to your callback. It's a JSON with some fields, useful like the session, for instance, uh, and other a little bit less. So you have the query text, 
that is the sentence that the user is sending so in our case it will be uh, instead of user original query to your agent it will be what's the weather in Turin uh, and here among the parameter we will have a parameter that is not called param but it's called geocity and here instead of the value we will have the actual name of the city so in our case we will have query text what's the weather in Turin parameters uh, geocity Turin that this is let's say the only important information that we need to take from here if we have just one intent with just a query text about the weather because we just need the city so notice that this is called only for filling the entire intent so we if we say what's the weather is lot filling so it's automatically inside the dialog flow and this is called just when all the information all the mandatory parameter are available so you will only only receive this with geocity with uh, a real city like Turin or whatever and then you can have some other messages and you can have information about the context the context that you set up or not the name of the intent and so on but the language for instance and so on but re again the most important things is just this parameter here especially in our case in which we need to ask the weather for a specific place and this is the request that you receive and you have to produce this response or at least a part of this response because in this response all the fields are optional so you can just send back only the field that you are going to use and that you need so here the most important field is the first one the fulfillment text that is the actual response so in our case the fulfillment text it will contain uh, it will be cloudy in Turin with uh, I don't know seven degree something like that that will be our current real weather forecasting all the other fields are basically useless for, uh, for us right now but just a, a quick overview the fulfillment messages is again fulfillment response but just in more complex way so for instance you see here that there is a card title a subtitle an image because this is because dialogflow connect also with telegram or with facebook messenger in which you can also provide a rich response with images and other things so you can also provide not just text but also all the other information buttons if you want some button to to press in a bot on telegram or, or something like that uh, you can also have source and so decide different texts according okay it's a bot for slack so i say this is a text response for slack it's uh for facebook is hello facebook it's for and that's it and you have maybe other it's for telegram you can have a different message for telegram from the same response you can also personalize the response according to the destination or your message and then again the context as before you have to, to manage that so if you set up a context you receive a context with a lifespan of six in the response you have to say the lifespan is one less for instance and again parameter in that context if any if change or not the language if you any any follow-up event or not but these all these fields are optional and the only field that we really need in our application because we just want a textual response is the first one fulfillment text the response that we are going to go to 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 give to the user and notice that this fulfillment text is as a variable exactly what we get from the response because it's it's really that response that go through dialog flow is then processed and reformat in a complete response that contains the same identical field so we just uh, meet this uh, fulfillment text mm -hmm. so this is um, 
the response that we are going to, to, to have, you see here that uh, if, you, if you look at the documentation, you see that all these fields are optional. So you can decide to have or not have, and there are maybe other fields that are not present that example. But again, the, the important field for us is this, the text to be shown on the screen, the weather forecasting. Okay, so instead from here, that is the request, we need uh, basically to extract this inside query result, inside parameters, get the, param the parameter that is called GeoCity. Because all the other things, since we have just one intent, all the other information that it's about the weather, we, we already know. So we don't need to extract those information from here. So we can create these in PHP. Uh, but before leaving the browser, we need to solve the HTTPS problem and the uh, public IP problem. Hopefully. And we are going to use this. Anyone ne ever seen this? No. Uh, this is called ngrock and is a command line application, very, very small, that allow you basically to map a given port local on your computer to a public HTTP and HTTPS address for free. And also by paying, obviously. But for free, you get, if you type on, the, on your command line, either on Windows or Linux or macOS, ngrock, HTTP, if you want to put uh, an HTTP connection to create an, an HTTP connection with the local port of your computer or your server, it creates, well, a web interface to see details about it. And it forwards, it creates a tunnel between your local host, that port that you specify, and an HTTP, in this case, katesapp.ngrock.io or and HTTPS, katesapp.ngrock.io. So in the free version of this, everything work. The difference is that there are two differences. The first one is that you cannot specify a name here. So you got something like uh, one, two, three, seven, five, uh, F, uh, a word like this is .ngrock.io and that link and that address lasts something like 24 hours or something like that and change every time you, you call ngrock. So if you want to use ngrock like uh, I will do right now, with, not with pro plan but with free plan, you just have to run this every time you want to use the, your application with Dialogflow and change every time you rerun ngrock or this time span last uh, just change the url here so you uh, set up ngrock for the first time with a given address and then in two days you have to change this uh, url because you rerun ngrock and you give and it give you a different address basically but this is a way to solve all this problem and also to develop and test a web application with a public address in HTTP and HTTPS that is uh, immediately reachable from the internet from your computer without any kind of a configuration. And this is also work on Edurom and Polito Network, so without any problem. And give you, again, a public address because it creates a tunnel between this public address and your local server. So NGROC is really simple to, to use. You just have to go to download, download it here, and then, well, unzip. And this connect your account, you can skip it. It's not mandatory. It works without connecting the account. And then open um, a, um, a command line, a terminal, and just type in the folder of NGROC, NGROC, HTTP, 
if you want to create public HTTP address and the local port of your server. So we are going to type in GROC HTTP 8888 because it's the PHP server is running on that port. And I think that I already have it. Let me check. Yeah. So it's just, just one simple file that you have to call from command line. So we can, first of all, launch this. So I should have. bigger one so uh, if you go in the folder of ngrock and you say ngrock well if you say ngrock help it gives you the help of this so it show you that you can create a secure public url for port 80 or you can also have a subdomain some of these are um, only for payment only if you paid you can also uh, tunnel to a different host on a different port, not just on local host, if you want, and so on. You can also have a tunnel on TCP only, on TLS, not just on HTTP, and so on. And so, ngrock HTTP 8888. If you run this, you see that the session expires in 8 hours, not 12, sorry. In eight hours, the session is uh, online and is the tunnel is forwarding between localhost 888 and 3F81, whatever. So we are going to copy this, which the HTTPS in Dialogflow, and here you see the connection that are opened through the tunnel, either the successful one and the problematic one any connection that is passing through so if we go to dialog flow here uh, here we can write these and then since that webhook.php is in our weather app folder we just need to say weather app slash webhook.php so the same address that we will call on localhost we instead need to just specify here so since this is a PHP file, we just call it webhook.php. If you have other kind of server with maybe some framework, you maybe could have just weather app or webhook slash and stop it. It depends obviously on the programming language, on the framework that you are going to use. So we don't need basic authentication. We don't need header and anything else. So we can save this. And and we should have done. Obviously, you can, once you have a webhook, you can also test it here in the console. So if it's working here, it's not working in your application, then you, the problem is not in dialog for in your application, but it is another way to debug this process. But this concludes the dialog part. So right now we have to just write code. Again, we need to come back here only if we the session of eight hour expires, so we have a new address, so we need to replace that address, or you run again dialog, uh, ngrock, just in two, these two cases. Otherwise, you can even close this, this, this browser and forget about it. So, so right now we have all the infrastructure ready. It, we know that if we type what's the weather in Turin, Dialogflow at a certain point will going to call uh, to perform a post request to this file that right now it's empty. So we need to, to do something. So first of all, we need to um, listen. So we need to do something, uh, a couple of things. List, at least, um, listen. Uh, for the post request from Dialogflow. Then we need to uh, extract the name of the city. Then 
let me write this here uh, get the for the weather forecast for that city and uh, um, send the weather information back to Dialogflow. Now, obviously, we need to uh, choose a weather forecast service with as uh, some API. So let's do this. Um, so it happens that openweathermap.org has some API to get the weather for free. So you just have to sign up. I already have an account. <coughs> With the password that hopefully I remember and uh, okay and here you see well that you have some products you can set up service payments and so on and you have a, a voice that is API keys in which give you a key for um, calling this API and you can generate a key here like default with just a random name and this is the key that we are going to use in our code to authorize our call to this uh, service just to be also in the quota that they give us because other uh, as given threshold also in this case you have to pay and so on but just for I don't remember, but quite a lot. Uh, 60 call for minutes are included. So you can call what's the weather 60 time, one time per second, and this is free if you need to, uh, to ask for mo more frequently. Uh, you have to pay, but this is just a, a prototype, so probably you, you don't even reach the 60 time per minute and you have the current weather API you cannot have the four days hour forecast with for free but you can have the five days for instance so you can have quite a lot of different um, information and uh, the current uh, the, the API the API call are just like this So api.openweathermap.org slash data slash 2.5 slash weather q city name and here we are going to add the city names coming from uh, um, dialog flow and uh, let me get the complete yeah and then we need to add uh, which unit we want that uh, temperature because it also gives the temperature so it's metric in its Fahrenheit in St. Celsius versus Fahrenheit and uh, we need to provide the key the API key that we just generated just the three information but the base URL is is this one so if you if we click here probably yeah we don't see the so we have this app ID that is the key that is automatic the key that is provided for the website and you see here the response mm, from this this call mm. so this is for london for instance you, so you get also the coordinate you get the temperature in fahrenheit the pressure the humidity the minimum temperature the maximum temperature the wind all this kind of information if it's cloudy uh, or not and also the description hmm? light intensity drizzle it's the weather forecast for london right now it's light intensity drizzle and you also have an icon if you know how to translate these according to documentation in a current icon the probably this and so on hmm? so all this information we are just going to provide a shorter version of these with just the um, temperature and the description something like uh, 
um, something like it's um, eight degree with uh, cloudy we forecast, cloudy weather with uh, light intensity drizzle hmm? in this case. So um, let's go back here. Yeah, I know. Because we need this after and let's put all these together. So first of all, we need to listen to the post request. So we have a variable, we can call it a request. And we get, we get the raw request from Dialogflow. And so we can say get file, get contents of PHP input. So this uh, PHP input is, if you don't know, a read-only stream that allow you to read the raw data from the request. So in this case, a post request called this page, the content of that request is raw, is get the raw request is getted, and so you can process that request. We know that that request is a JSON file, so we can try to convert it in a JSON, consider it as a JSON, so we can have our request JSON, and that is basically a JSON decode uh, of request. Hmm. So it gets the request and uh, um, convert it in a JSON uh, structure because it's a JSON. It gives you a warning if you want, let's say ext JSON is missing in Composer, uh, but this ext JSON should be already in the PHP core, among the PHP core function, in XAMPP, in MAMP, or whatever, so you don't need to install it separ separately. But if your installation of PHP don't include this ext JSON, that is the extension for JSON, you just have to add it to Composer like we did yesterday for the Dialogflow um, SDK. Hmm? So from here we have the, that request, yeah, the take close, that, that JSON request that com is coming from uh, Dialogflow, and from there we have to look for the query results, look for parameters, and among the parameters we just are interested in the JLCT parameter, that is the parameter that we uh, were interested in our intent. Hmm? So here we have just the JLCT parameter among parameter name. So we are just looking for this among parameter in query results. So we can get the city directly. So since that is a JSON, that request JSON, we can do this of query uh, result of parameters. And finally, of geo city. So here in city, if we are going to ask what's the weather in Turin, in city we should have a string that represents Turin. So we can just check if this city is set for any reason, or if it's just a null. And if it's set, we can maybe call a uh, function. So just not to have everything in the same uh, in the same request. So we can just uh, so that if you have multiple parameter, you can also fill multiple parameter from different data sources if you have. And so for instance, if you need dates, you can get date from your computer. You don't have the current date. You don't have to ask any external service. So. We just this this here, and we need this two step. So we can create this get weather information function. Hmm? 
that obviously will need to have to pass a parameter that is city and to receive a parameter that is city So, just to briefly recap, we, are, we get the, the post request from uh, Dialogflow, line 10. We decode that as a JSON line 12. In line 15, we got the city name, if any, and if there is a city name, in, uh, we call the get weather information for that given city. So here, we need two variables. One is the API key. And the other one is uh, the, let's say, the URL to perform the call. So the API key is this one. So I'm going to copy this from here and put here. Uh, obviously, as yesterday, I'm going to then delete this API key from uh, uh, the open weather map website because otherwise these API key go uh, online on YouTube and the weather URL is let's get this from here is where is here is is something like this and then we have to add city and then we have to add the unit celsius versus fahrenheit so we have interested in uh, and uh, um, units uh, equal metric and we obviously need the um, api key as app id so that API key and this is a uh, HTTPS so the URL is HTTPS whatever is written on that website the city that we just uh, get from the request the unit because we are interested in Celsius degree not in Fahrenheit without anything it defaults to Fahrenheit and the uh, API ID the app ID that is our API key that we just generated so this is a get we need to perform a get request to that and get back the 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 json file associated with that and and uh, <laughs> extract the the temperature and the weather description from those fields in the in the json file that we have seen in the browser uh, so, like before, uh, we can create a variable. So, I, okay. We can get the weather right now. So, we can get a variable that we can call it weather. That, as we did before, uses this file get contents and call that URL. So this weather as the actual response from that get request, we need to decode that in JSON because again, we know that is a JSON file from the API documentation. So as before, we can have a weather JSON that is JSON decode uh, dollar weather true and from that JSON, we can extract the temperature and the description. It's eight, eight degrees Celsius and it's cloudy, for instance, or it's sunny. Um, so we have a weather temperature and we will have a uh, weather detail. Hmm? So in weather temperature, we will get from, uh, uh, not the tail, description. 
So from here, we will have this weather JSON, like we did before for <coughs> the API of Dialogflow. And from here, we extract the temperature. The temperature, let's have a look at this London, maybe in a different browser. Yeah, better. So we need the temperature. The temperature is under main temp. And maybe we are just interested in not 280.32. We just can get 280. We just can round it to the, to, the in, to the integer. And we need a description that it's under weather, zero, because this is an array. So the first element of the array and then description. So here is uh, main and uh, temperature, temp, and we can round it. And the other one is weather JSON. Uh, I lost it. Uh, main, no, uh, weather zero description. So weather zero and description. Hmm. So here we should have the temperature in degree, in Celsius degree, and the description for the given city. And right now, with this two information, we can finally reply back to our post, to our webhook in post. So we can prepare a response that is, it uh, is weather temperature uh, degree in dollars in dollar city uh, with uh, so its temperature with uh, uh, weather description in uh, city mm. so it's eight degree with uh, cloudy in uh, Turin mm. and uh, we can prepare the fulfillment as a JSON and send it back So we have this response, as we did yesterday, the fulfillment is an array which contains the fulfillment text uh, variable with uh, the, the, say, the fulfillment text uh, key with uh, as a value our response so we have this fulfillment it's an array it's not a json file dialogflow needs a json file so we need just to use json uh, encode this time not json decode and to create a json starting from the fulfillment and obviously this just create a json we need to send back to answer to that http post with a json and to answer a post we need to write You were not ready. We need to write before JSON encode. We did it last week. We already answered to a post request in PHP. Hmm. I have heard something right. Yeah. 
echo. Like we did for answering the IJAC request. Just echo back the response. So these should complete everything if I don't make any, uh, any mistake today. So if you are going to run everything uh, and then we have time today to catch any error, uh, if we ask what's the weather in a given city in English, with the name of the city in English, we should be able to get the right answer from the weather API service. So right now, if we, you can test it here if you want, directly in Dataflow, but we are more intrepid and so we are going to test it here. Uh, this is still active, so let's see if it works. So let's start with hi. Hello, how can I help you? And it's reasonable. Uh, so let's ask what's the weather in Rome. It is 12 degree with clear sky in Rome. So you see that incredibly it worked. And uh, in Rome, it's a little bit uh, um, hotter than here. It's 12 degree, there is clear sky. And just for testing, if we change the name of the city, what's the weather in uh, Turin? The answer should be different. It is seven degree with broken clouds in Turin. Hmm. So it's seven degree with broken clouds uh, whatever it is in Turin and you can also ask any you know place in the world uh, let's change will uh, let's change sentence like uh, tell me the weather uh, where Milan it is seven degree with few clouds in Milan. So if we if we test like um, a, a more distant place, maybe San Diego. San Diego. San Diego. It is fourteen degree with light rain in San Diego. So hopefully, maybe in San Diego, California. In that case, we should maybe also add, if you are speaking about the US city, you should also add the, the, the state in the request. You can, in the city, comma, the state of the city. In, in the weather app API, it support this. So it's 14 degree with light rain in uh, San Diego, but it's also quite uh, uh, late afternoon, night, so it's, it's reasonable. Uh, for them and hopefully get to the San Diego, California, not San Diego, any other San Diego in the world. Uh, but yeah, th this is work. And if you go here in uh, um, NGROC, you see that we have four requests, four post requests. That is what we expected to have with a 200 OK. So no problem at all. If we have some problem here, we should say 500, for instance, internal server error, 404, if there is a not found page. So here it's just another point to, to check if everything is working. So let's imagine that this is not working, the first step. Uh, the first thing that we should check is here. If we get the proper uh, call here, if you don't get the proper call from the address or the post, so there is a problem somewhere. And you can also test, as I told you before, here in Dialogflow, so just to exclude that any problem is in your application is not here. So here we have the same identical, uh, what's the weather in uh, New York, let's change. And it say it's zero. It's a little bit. It's better in San Diego. It's zero degree with overcast clouds in New York. 
Mm? So this connect to our webhook as well. It just keep all the process PHP, all the HTML and JavaScript page because it's direct dialogue flow that speak with this webhook. Mm? So if you have also an integration with Telegram, Skype, whatever, all this part that we did today it continues to work because obviously you don't it's directly telegram or whatever that through dialogue flow is able to connect to an external let's say n a service that is not available in dialogue flow and that could be external like like a weather forecast or it could be also let's say internal like a database on your computer like the time or of the server the actual time of the server the date it, that is set up in the server, so not needed an external third-party service. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I'm going to do, so this concludes the voice user interface part. What I'm going, to, I'm going to do after the lecture is to export this agent that should have everything exported, including the settings for the fulfillment that you see just a URL and the source code of everything, including the webhook dot php and put it on github so that you can have a running example and working example of everything um, as, I, as i told you before this conclude the voice user interface example with a, a complete example of different uh, steps from the speech web speech api to simple keyword matching string contains that we did last week to usage of natural language processing uh, uh, capability to real to understand uh, a sentence and extract actable actionable data from that like the city like the date that we extracted mm -hmm. obviously here we just stop in the city here but we have another parameter that is the date but it's not mandatory so we can put also date mandatory and get here also the date and if both city and date uh, is available we can ask the weather forecasting service for the weather forecast in that city for that date if it is one of the date allowed for uh, the free profile on uh, weather openweathermap.org so this uh, concludes this part before leaving but i can stop the registration uh, before leaving in this 10 minutes, five minutes, uh, I have a question for you. So I, I'm going to ask you a question and then I stop the registration so you can think about it. Uh, the question is, how do you think right now to add the voice feature in your project? So if some groups can exemplify what they think, how they plan to integrate that, to all the other people present in the room that could be useful for uh, having a sharing of idea so while you think about the the answer i stop this and then i will have to merge two different file but this is another problem and tomorrow just to, to have this in the recording we will have lab as always and from now up to the last week of the course with one exception we will always have lab as a supervised work group so you can work on your uh, application if you have any problem also technical problem with something that oh, is only related to, you, to your project like i would like to add a notification service in your project we can reason together if you have some problem and you tried before we can reason together on how to solve that problem the only exception will be we will ask you to use a laboratory to prepare the user evaluation so that you can receive a feedback before doing the actual evaluation of your prototype with real user that again will be as a small number of users mm. and obviously we will provide you with feedback about milestone number three and you can if you have any question about that feedback when it will be released surely the hours in the lab will be uh, useful for asking uh, a clarification about those feedback and one more one more things that uh, your colleague yesterday um, made me think uh, just to tell this another time for the exam 
you will have two parts one is the project the other one is uh, a written exam and you can have these two parts in different exam session so it's not mandatory to have both of them in the same session the important thing is that you have the exam the written exam and the, the project presentation in the same academic year so you have up to september 2020 to give both the part and both the part will be in separate date so we will have the written exam in the date that will be published hopefully on uh, from Politecnico in the exam date and the project presentation in a separate date mm -hmm. in the session in each session and you in the week before the Christmas holiday we will not me with Professor Corno you will uh, do uh, one hour and a half of uh, exercise for the exam so we are preparing a uh, text of the exam since it's the first year that we have this course we don't have an history of a uh, written exam so we are just preparing some sample and you will start for that hour and a half to, to do some exercise let's say for the exam and then we we plan to have the last week of the course here for three hours or just one hour and a half we have to see for doing other exercise for the written exam mm 